I'm, I'm still waiting for Chaos to join. Hopefully he'll he'll do that on his own. No, you'll never get me. Hello. Hello, Hello there, Mr. Cub. Chaos. Hello, Cub. How's it going? Sorry, I didn't know I was supposed to drag you in here. No, uh, I was just uh, just getting all my setup, pulling up my little uh, little, little map of the circuit, Ooh, okay, okay. my table of uh, results for this season. So here we are, uh, coming into uh, Circuit of Spa Francorchamps in Belgium, uh, the famed Belgian Grand Prix, and always a favorite with drivers, always a favorite with watchers. I think we all really love this circuit. What are your thoughts on it? I love this circuit, even though I'm not really good at it. It's a, it's a beauty to drive. The people that are watching, please tell me if the audio is good. If I'm not too quiet this time. Looks like we've got our first drivers heading out onto the track. Who is that, Bricklot? Let's get the track map going Baron. on. We got one of the. Uh, Pass is leading the pack. Uh, yep. Looks like Brick is just gonna take his spot. Some cool stuff I got for the broadcast. I hope it works. I mean, I hope it's gonna work. Uh, Diego says better than last week, by the yeah, way. Yeah, I, I can see that. I, uh, I turned on the chat for that. So yeah, this is gonna be, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, we're already eight races into the season, Cub. Yeah. And there's, what, only six, so we're, I think we're like, uh, halfway through. Yeah, we have, uh, we've hit the halfway point of the season. So those guys are actually racing on the, uh, outlap. If you look at Breck, uh, Brick, uh, whoever is behind behind them, and the uh, Williams. Those guys are going full speed on an outlap. So either uh, it's really cold right now, or those guys just f are fighting for position. I'm gonna hop on with uh, Brick for the, for his hat lap. All right, and I'll follow someone else since I was also with Brick. Oh, yellow flag, sector one. And of course, our two championship protagonists right now are going to be JDR and El Susio Dan. JDR, I'd like to point out, going out to set a lap on the medium is the only one to do so. So, Gear is active. Full prowl, he's going 330. 332 top speed, so uh, I think a pretty low downforce setup. And JDR is starting his lap, let's see what he can do on these mediums. Nicely catches the apex at the source. Through Eau Rouge and Radion. Nice, not a bit of lift. Comes over the top uh, at 310 kilometers an hour. Chaos, are you seeing the rain? Or am I uh, going crazy right now? I oh, do this not is definitely. Rain. I am seeing rain. I am seeing a lot of rain already. Oh, well, it's a big circuit and I'm on the other side of the track. Yes, I do see rain. I now see rain. Yes, it was on your side of the circuit. Uh, over by, I guess, you would be right around Stavlo right now. So that the. Uh, Okay, you know, I always think that uh, that Spa Francorchamps looks a bit like a floppy gun, and it's right in the handle of the gun right now. Oh, you know what? I just I'm watching the broadcast, and the people actually can see the new hub. X. Oh wait, can or can't? Cannot. So I'm ah. gonna do something. Okay. Uh, yeah, take a moment, and I'll just uh, cover. I'll this put, capture. Put the, Let's do it. Put the broadcast on JDR, and I'll just be commentating for him. So Rogaine sets the fastest lap first, and this is going to be critical. The rain's coming down. This is going to be everyone's fastest lap. So Rogaine gets a 142. Oh, there's someone going slow in front of him. 
He's off the track though. Dubman is out of the way. JDR comes through. So I'm gonna switch him to JDR actually. As you said. And he's just coming around to the conclusion of his lap. A little bit of an oversteer, but he comes through. What's his time gonna be? He's seventh place, and it's raining. I don't think it's going to get any faster for him. He's going to have to stay out because if he pits, it's just going to be fully wet. This is a difficult situation for JDR, but I'd like to point out El Susio Dan has not set a lap time yet. He is, in fact, in the pits yeah. right now. This is going to be very bad for both of them. They're going to have to fight through the pack because unless this rain abruptly stops, everyone's lap right now is as fast as it's going to get. Look, Ian Brax is a 149. He must have had a moment there. Oh yeah, he's disallowed his lap. Krith is coming into the pits. He's saying, it's too late for this. I might have to put on mediums. I'm not certain about that, but he is certainly coming in uh, after having not set a lap in Pro Game. Looking very nice with that 42.9. I cannot see anyone setting a better time than that if it's raining. Yeah, I'm trying to get this uh, new hat to work, but it's... Uh... Yeah, I don't know what's going on. If it, if it keeps acting up, I'm just gonna turn it off. Fair enough, fair enough. So, uh, do, you, do you think those guys are gonna improve those that 142.9? I do I not know. I honestly don't think it's gonna happen. Yeah, uh, it's still raining, so uh, I don't think the track is going to be dry enough for uh, any kind of improvement which means this could very well be pole set with everyone's very first lap also brother john has retired already uh i wonder if he I crashed or if he just recognized the situation that no one's setting a faster lap than this well here we go eyes on balzac right now who's just starting a lap he is trying to run in very wet conditions here let's see how he can handle it because we're at the very edge of dry traction here. So JDR, JDR has retired for the tired. session. So P7, and uh, that means I'll start in mediums, but I'll see oh, that is Oh, big going. moment! And Balzac spins out, coming out of radio. And, well, that's it. You cannot go flat through the Eau Rouge radio section. While that lap is uh, is fully over, Pat Lassard now, uh, coming around, is he still going to try and run a lap here? He's at a 147, but he's already done one lap out. Uh, he's got lots of ERS left, let's see where his deploy is. So Alsa Siodan, going on a half lap, on mediums actually. Ooh, and a lot, tr lots of trouble traction, it's definitely uh, really wet already. Let's see how he goes. Oh, Going oh through a he holds it. He Big holds lift. it for Radion. Yeah, well, he needs that. He, you know, if he can get a time, just, you know, even four seconds off the pace, he won't be starting from the very back. Oh, big lockup into Lecom. Yeah, he's going to be struggling a lot throughout this whole lap. Now, here's one of the real traction limited corners coming into Brussels. He's through as best as he can. Traction's fairly good. Way off the apex there. It's so hard to judge in these conditions. He's got to push as hard as he can, but, you know, a slight mistake is going to cost him a second. Through the downhill double left-hander, up to Lefine. Oh, you can just hear those tires squealing. Yeah, it's really hard. I wonder what, yeah. what kind of time he's gonna put in. I am also, I, I'm gonna guess something like a 146, 147, which is going to put him right towards the back uh, here. I don't, th I don't think he, it's, I don't think it's gonna be even a 150. Chris has retired from the session without a time. It's so, a one, yeah, you're 140 right, right now. Yeah, he's, he's, he's gonna one, be lucky gonna to get a 150. It. Oh, this Ooh, is big brutal. lock up, big lock up. Yeah, you know what? I, would, I was uh, being a good bit too generous there. He's like another 153. 154.3 for El Susio Dan, 16th place. What we were saying, what a bad situation JDR had found himself in. Uh, let's see, is that... Let's see, we've got some new guys here, so uh, Explanate, is that... Uh, 
I that's, can, can uh, tell us something about these new guys. That's uh, Asus Yodan's friend that uh, okay. joined just today, actually. And uh, this P2 guy, I assume that's P2 and not Pool. The guy in uh, P6? Hello, yeah, yeah. I'm reading that as P2. That's uh, I, I don't I don't know how to read that. Let's just call it P2 for now. That'll be nice and confusing. Moment. We'll find P2 and P6. So let's see if there's anybody else that's uh, there's actually on track. The only person out right now is in fact P2, who's going around. He's trying to set a time on the softs. But it's going to be very difficult. Uh, this is a very odd qualifying. There's not going to be very much happening at all. I mean, yeah, by common agreement, the rain they just very came well really them. fast on them. Yeah. It was really first person out wins. And in this case, uh, the person who had the best pace and was out the quickest was Rogaine. Uh, once again, that 142.9. Uh, Kyle, why don't we take a moment to just uh, fill in everyone who's tuning into the stream on how the season's been going so far. So, thus far, we've only had three winners this whole season. Uh, that's been JDR. Uh, El Susio Dan, and in one very interesting Chinese Grand Prix, we had Raro uh, take the victory. Yeah, that is pretty crazy. By the way, just an FYI, you are uh, cutting out a lot. Yeah, uh, my cutting out is unfortunate and outside of my control right now. Uh, there's a persistent upload uh, collapses in my area, so sometimes I can hear you perfectly well, but I'll be cutting out. So. Uh, Hopefully we can maybe, uh, you know, if we feel like being real fancy, we can splice my audio into your video later on, but we'll see. Uh, anyways, for story of the season, uh, right now, JDR is leading El Dan 131 points to 112, uh, and four races to three. Yeah, that, uh, that championship fight is going to be really close, I think, And the there are the season. There are a couple of dark horses here, too. Um, you know, you could totally see if someone has schedule problems. Uh, Rogaine and Krith and even Balzac. Um, these guys are all potentially uh, within reach of, uh, of making some moves higher up in the championship. Um, but as I see it, there's kind of the two guys who are just taking win after win from each other. And then there's the fight to see who gets to be number three on the podium. Would you agree with that? I mean, you know. JD and uh, JD and Alsusio Dan, they're both uh, aggressive drivers, I would say. Maybe As Alsusio we saw Dan's, last week, they uh, had uh, some yeah. contact last week. Maybe Alsusio Dan is slightly more aggressive than JD, but uh, you know, this is diff too. There's a lot of you know contact happening, a lot of crazy stuff going on. So uh, you know, literally anybody could be on the podium. You know, maybe a safety car will come out, maybe, you know, and weather changes drastically again. Yeah, last uh, last time we had Luke Brax, who, I mean, we've, we've always, always been talking pretty highly of the Brax brothers. And again, hopefully Luke is able to join in here with his uh, issues that he's been having since. They've got really good pace, but they just have terrible hardware problems that uh, they keep on limiting their ability to get in. Um, and yeah, that really sucks, uh, Dan. Uh, Destroying your first lap when the first lap is the only lap that has a chance. Uh, that's a that's a rough situation. Yeah. And uh, I got information from Balzac that there's gonna be rain in the uh, race. At the 20 start. Twenty minutes after. Twenty minutes after oh. the start. Well, that's that the, uh, is predicted. some intrigue. Well, P2 can't improve on this time, but honestly, I can't blame anyone for not improving on their times right now. There's a few guys who are going out, trying to set some laps on mediums. Ian Brax is in the wall as uh, Jay Patel comes through. Let's see if anyone has actually started their lap Her yet. Ian. That is, um, yeah. Oh, and then, oh, there's actually a lot of, a lot of people on the track, so maybe they're gonna try and improve on the uh, intermediates. I've just had a connection issue, so I'm going to try and rejoin the session. Okay, let me know if you need an invite. So, uh, yes, please. I would appreciate one. Okay, I got you. I got you. Invite. Where's uh? There we go. Yep. So DRS disabled. 
Yeah, and the thing, uh... I don't think it's an, I don't think they're gonna improve their times by any means, actually. Yeah, I mean the the best lap you can set on an intermediate is still going to be well behind in uh you know, a mediocre uh dry lap. But let's see what sort of times they can set here. I think I saw Nate was coming up on the lap here. Oh, but he's he's well wide. I think Jay's on the lap and Red Baron is strong in his own too. Alright, here comes Pat Lassard trying to move his way up from 14th place. And Ian Brax a little bit ahead of him. Ian Brax is a guy, let's see, what, what do you think the fastest wet time they can set here? Because I don't think he's going to be able to do better than a 149 in wet conditions. Mm, you know, considering that the DRS is already disabled, or not, I don't think there's a possibility of them improving their, their times. I think uh, I'm watching Red Baron right now. I think he's going to do like a 150 probably on the intermediates. And right now, the only person who that could have potentially helped was El Susio Dan, and uh, he's retired from the session. Yeah, the, most of the people are retired, actually. Of course, There's with... There's only a uh, few, few guys that have been still running. Yeah, I could imagine that there was just a common agreement that uh, they're going to get on with the race. But there's still a few who, uh, who have the ambition to try it out. Here we go, Red Baron. Yeah, Red Baron is 8 seconds up on that time. Coming up to Blanchimont. So this uh this might be into like a two minute lap time. Well, uh yeah he's actually yeah he could have a decent time here, but it's not going to be better than what he said in the dry. Yeah. Yeah, fifty five. Fifty four four. Yeah, you know you've got what uh, a, one large. Twice. You've got one large DRS zone. Which is probably worth like what three tenths, if not more. Ooh, little moment for Red Baron there. Actually, a big moment. Just coming out of radio. Good point, Diego. Maybe Red Baron is just practicing uh, driving in the rain. Yeah, that's a very reasonable thing. I definitely. That's actually pretty smart. I am prone to. Uh, to practicing and qualifying, especially when I haven't been able to practice in certain conditions. But yes, for our championship standings right now, uh, JDR is leading with 131 points, El Susio Dan has 112, and behind him is Rogaine with 83, just narrowly ahead of Krith, who has 76 points. Balzek is the highest scoring person who has not yet gotten a podium, but he's just been running in this metronomic fourth place, fourth place, fourth place results. So he's really hauling in the points in spite of a lack of a really standout race for him so far this season. Raro um, has been consistently finishing in the points and has that one big win in China. And he's just narrowly head of her Red Baron, 51 and 46 points respectively. And then we've got a J.O. Vidal, who had a couple of really strong results earlier in the season, but he's been struggling a little bit more lately. And uh, Luke Brax, who's missed a lot of races, but still has that one podium in Great Britain. And rounding up the top 10, we've got uh, Lacadien with 22 points. And his best result is that uh, very interesting Chinese Grand Prix, uh, where he was able to get second place behind Raro. And uh, that's only one of his two, two points scoring. His other is uh, an eighth place in Azerbaijan. Oh, Alright, let's do let's do race predictions. This is gonna be a hard one. Also, I think P2 and Nameless Snake collided. They're sitting next to each other on the camel straight with their tires off. <laughs> Alright, but predictions. Uh 
You know, geez, I'm having trouble wanting to predict against JDR here. I totally believe that he can push his way up from 7th place. That's absolutely doable, especially because I think he's going to have pace on a couple of the guys in front of him. But we've got a few new people. I don't know where Exponé is going to be. Um, yeah, you so, know, uh, most of the people above JD, I think, yeah, they're they are all on uh, soft. So, question is, can they make those softs last those twenty minutes if the rain comes? Yeah. So, people who are like, I think the Williams are in a really nice position here to potentially grab a podium in these weird conditions. Uh, Balzac has been so metronomic, you know. I think I'm gonna say JDR. El Susio Dan, and I'm saying Balzac gets his first podium. So that's my prediction. I'll write that one down I'm gonna for posterity. Say, I'm going to say P1 Raro, P2 Nameless Nate, P3 Prestige. I promised all of them that I'm going to call them out on the uh, podium prediction, so. Alright. Think of it as a comment commentator's blessing, you know? I think we predicted the podium, what, four times now? In Div 2? If not, if not more? Oh, by the way, um, uh, Aristephus uh, sent a message to me just saying if you could turn up your, uh, your mic volume a little bit or just um, change the balance on your OBS so that your microphone input's just a little bit higher. Apparently I'm quite overpowering to you. <sighs> he wants me to turn up my mic or turn you down? Uh, I assume turn up your mic, but I mean turning me down would probably have a similar effect. Okay, let's, uh, let's turn you down a bit. Sounds good. I'll work to also uh, keep myself from getting too excited, okay. although I am pretty hyped for this race. Yeah, I think uh, if JD can, uh, you know, stay within that top five i think he's gonna be a uh, he's gonna have a pretty good chance at winning because if the rain does come uh he is going to be one stopping and the rest of the drivers i think him and uh and few people below top 10 they're gonna be starting on mediums so they are gonna try and aim for that one stop while you know everybody in top 10 Expect JD that's that starts at minions. They're gonna have to uh, most likely double stop. Well, I mean, I so think they're gonna could... lose, you know, those twenty seconds on that on on JD. I think in he the can pits. pull a pretty long run because Spa is quite nice on the tires. Like normally, one stop is the strategy here. So if the rain comes and after twenty minutes, that's only going to be um, about fifteen laps in tops. More like twelve, thirteen. Yeah. Well, I think I, I'm, a, a I'm lap time here is a one fifty, or one like forty eight, forty six. Yeah, I, I'm I'm giving an upper prediction, but I think that there's going to be a good number of people who will be able to take the softs all the way to the rain if Jeff hasn't been misleading us, which he has been known to do in the past. I mean, you know, Jeff is a, uh, so you know. I think uh, with weather changes, he's actually pretty good. Well, you know what? Uh, I don't necessarily trust Jeff, but I do trust whoever's responsible for turning on and turning off the DRS. Yeah, Je Je you know, Jeff sometimes says the rain is going to be in five minutes, and then you ask him again. Oh, and then here we he go. says, rain in 15 minutes. But here it's we go. Lights out. Lights on, I should say. And here we go. There's someone on the ins Strong inside side. zone, Alfa Romeo. Rogan keeps his spot. Redburn trying to go around the outside. PLL. Uh, made up a lot of places already. Exponent. Okay, let's drop. Anyway, Rogan's gonna try oh, to defend I'm here, here, I think. And we've got a safety car. Dubman and a. Uh, Jay are already out. Um, I did not see what happened, but uh, I see that both of the cars are somewhere uh, 
What do you call that? A rush or something? I don't know. You know what? We are seeing a different thing right now, Cub. I have seen no one crash at all. So you, do you, you don't have a safety car? I do not have a safety car. Uh, it is just that the race is over. Um, yes, I have indeed dropped. Uh, okay. uh, I'll rejoin off of you. I got you an invite. So Rogaine lost at P1. Redburn did overtake him before the uh, the safety car came out. And P let's, let's let's look at the uh, position change. Yeah, P2, three positions up, and P3 actually. Very solid start by him. Got X Bonnet. Uh, another new guy. P4, pretty impressive. JD in P uh, P5, up to up two positions. Good start, good start. Uh, the safety car is definitely, hmm, actually maybe not. It's not really playing into his hands. So. Uh, here, Balzac dropped two positions. Started P4, now is P6. Brick is P7, rather P8. Last three positions, starting from P5. And then we've got. La uh, we've got a couple of people pinning under uh, the safety car here. So uh, I think this is uh, an okay thing to do here. While maybe, you know, maybe not the best thing you could do, it's, uh, it's not gonna really, you know, change how the race is gonna go for you. Because uh, if you're gonna wait for that rain, that 20 minutes, I think with this safety car, starting on south, it was possible to actually make it work. And, you know, pinning isn't bad. It's not a it's not a bad strategy choice here, especially because you know you're gonna be right behind the uh, the pack. You're not, you're, you didn't really lose any time here. Yeah, it's merely a loss of track position, and there's enough pace differential that if you if you feel that you're you know second or two faster than the people ahead of you. It's not that bad to be behind them. There's a lot of overtaking opportunities in Spa. Why a lot of strain? Well, you have to be uh, aware of the DRS trains here. It's something uh, that's gonna make overtakes pretty difficult if you're like in a four-man uh, DRS train. Uh, so you're then with a penalty. And already up into 10. What is that penalty for? It's a 5 second, I am assuming for uh, he made making contact under safety car. That is very possible, but usually it gives two penalties when that happens. Yeah, that's true, but he didn't pit, did he? That is correct, he has not pitted. Uh, everyone from Balzac down has pitted. Uh, so, 13th and onwards is uh, someone who's pitted, everyone else, no pit stops. So the story here is going to be, what can El Susio Dan do with this race? What can JDR do as the only person who started right up in the front with the medium tires? What is going to happen with everyone who is running on the softs? JL Patel joins us in the chat. Sorry about that start of the race, man. Hey, if you'd like to drop in to, uh, to cast with us, uh, I'm sure that Cub and I would both welcome you here. What do you think about that, Cub? Sure, I don't mind. Yeah. Too spicy. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, that's what they say about the red water. Alright, hey, Jay's gonna be joining us, and we're gonna have a three-man cast. Yeah, it's safety cover for at least one more lap. Well, this is only going to be good for the people who are hoping to keep those soft tires going. Yeah. You know, knowing that this is a pretty long track, knowing that this safety car is you know, gonna go on for one more lap. I don't think it's wise here to uh, try to uh, warm up your tires at, yeah, at this moment Dan, on the thinking, track. I don't think he needs to be doing this yet. But yeah, not there's still you know a lot of a lot of distance you have to go through, and those tires are still are gonna cool down in sector two. Keep in mind that uh, going, no. Dan has the medium, so I don't think Dan's in any threat of having his tires wear out before the rain comes. 
Yeah, well, Dan is in a pretty good spot here, and so is JD, I but you know, yes. the soft runners, I don't think it's necessary for them to warm up the tires at, at this moment on the track. I think, you know, once you get to sector 3, that's where you want to start weaving, weaving left and right, left and right, and, you know, warm up those tires, because uh, when you warm up the tires, you create additional wear. And your goal here is to go as long as you can on those softs. You wanna be, you know, preserving them as much as you can. And warming them up is definitely not helping here. So, Cub, you think safety current this lap? Uh, yeah, pretty sure, yeah. I would tend to agree. Uh, I don't see why not. Every in the pack is, you know, everybody's close. Cars are cleaned off the track. No debris. I think we're good to go. Alright, so, so Red Baron is gonna be leading the restart here. Unless the safety car is bugged and it's just gonna, you know, keep on going forever. I'm interested to see what happens with Krith and Balzac so far back. Both of them, of course, made early pit stops here. Yeah, so I'm, I just checked Red Baron's tire where his uh, fronts are like at our. 18 and oh, 19 and uh, 17 percent. We have this, we have you know those cool widgets that tell me that stuff right now. <laughs> so uh, safety car in this lap. Redburn is gonna lead the restart here. And I'm going to keep an eye from further back in the pack and ride on board with Balzac. I'm gonna I'm gonna switch to Rogan. Let's see if he can uh, how close he's gonna be here. To Red Baron while he uh, restarts the race. So the safety car is in, they can pre go. Oh, Red Baron out of sp almost spun on the restart, but still makes a pretty, gr pretty good getaway. Oh no, and that was a spin. Pat Lassard spins off. I'm not sure if he's damaged. So in the front, not much happened, honestly. I see Alsusio then. Uh, trying to overtake Prestige, but Prestige keeps the uh, position here. Let's see if Rogan can fight with Red Baron. Burn in his ERS here. Robert right behind Balsa. So far, so good. No, not much happened other uh, than the restart. Uh, Ooh, Rex is taking a look up am I seeing rain? See uh, yeah, I'm seeing rain chaos. I haven't seen it yet, but uh, I just saw it just now. Yep, it's it, that was not 20 minutes at all. Thank you, I Jeff. Think, uh, uh, yeah, Jeff. You, I'm sorry, Jeff. You're fired. Friendship ended with Jeff. My best friend is now dearest. So, uh, so everybody that pit it, uh, lap one under the safety car, they just you know. Last 20 seconds. Yeah. Well, I mean, they didn't lose 20 seconds, but they lost well, track yeah. position. Under safety cars, not 20 seconds, you know, but track position, yeah. And w which is crucial here. As you can see, the uh, top three runners are already, they have what, a 2.5 second gap. JDR, do, yeah. JDR the, uh, is the one behind. And JDR is very nice to catch up. Is so gonna pick Ian that? makes no, a. Too early. Hello, boys. Brick left through on Ian Brax. Hey there, Jay. How's hey it Jay, going? Hey, Jay. Hey, Jay. Welcome to the Monday Cast. Sorry about your uh, your race. Uh, apparently, uh, apparently a spicy uh, turn three through Overish and Radio. I don't know, honestly. I was like clear. No one was beside me. And all of a sudden, all of a sudden, Dan is coming through me. Oh like, shit! What the fuck? Uh, that sucks. Side by side, Brother John and Ian Brax. And that was an exciting moment, two of them going side by side. Ian Brax is through into 7th, Brother John, holds 8th. And we've got a little bit of a train here, with Balzac chasing down Prestige and Luke Brax fighting 11th, 12th, and 13th. But for that yeah, matter, a really everyone... big train. Yeah, everyone From, in the uh, back. P10. All the way to the back, it's just a one big train. As you see, Dan makes an overtake on a on Brother John, makes it stick. P8 for him. 
The rain remains light. Yeah, but it's there, so you know. The, uh, Everyone's gonna be very cautious. I think. It. I think for now, the racing line is gonna be dry, but it's not gonna be you know as dry as it you know would be without the rain. So JD closing that gap from uh, what I saw. I saw that 2.7. Now it's a 1.2. I'd like to point out that uh, Ooh, like and I think Brother John, right Brother John just uh, spun out on the exit of that corner there. I've got my eyes I on P2. See, I don't see any wing damage, so I think he's okay. There's a very tight fight three ways for first place here, and JDR is pulling his way into this fight. DRS has just been enabled, interestingly, as we're uh, past yeah, the, safety uh, the safety car. Oh, yeah. that was a little bit of a collision between P2 and Red Baron. I'm not sure if he took any wing damage there. But this is letting JDR back into the fight. JDR is now within DRS range, and despite the conditions, DRS is going to be allowed here. So the top I don't think Rogan can DRS defend it. Maybe he can defend. Yeah, P P2 is really close here. Red Baron throwing Rogan for the lead. But he's not gonna go for it. Oh, and Nameless P2 is gonna out. try on the uh, and we got VSC. We've got a virtual safety car now. Any idea who is that one for? Was that Nameless Nate? Nate? No, it's Nameless Nate. As we can look back, Nameless Nate's car is lying stricken on the course. I guess he just retired. Did he crash into the wall? Looks like he uh, he lost at the top of the hill. And I think that Gap Flag has lost his front wing. So Dear you're back to racing, VSC is off, and JD right behind P3. I'm trying to chase them down. And there's Raro chasing Balzac with a train falling from Brother John Raro. So JD JD actually F3. gonna make an overtake on uh, P2 goes to P4. P2 and P2 was off the track. Nonetheless, you always love to see someone new to the league doing uh, doing so well in their first race. Of course, I'm sure it's not his first race, but his first race with us. Oh, Rogaine! Rogaine is the Rogaine first of the, the leaders. Pits. He's, He's going to try to undercut Red Baron here. This is going to be wet enough, though, for it. intermediates. I'm just going to check really quick. But is he, yeah, he is peeing for intermediates here. This is a daring move. He's going to drop him all the way down to the back, but let's see what he is able to do with these intermediate tires. Alright, he comes out just behind Pat Lassar. Yep, so gap flag, another person to pit, but I think you said he had yeah, wing damage. Yeah, his, his front wing's entirely gone, but I'm sure he's... well, let's see. Is he going to put on the intermediates? Because if he pits and he puts on anything but intermediates, you know, he's not getting back into the points here. Let's see what they've got lined up. It is intermediates. I see the green stripe. And a fresh wing on for Gadflag. Meanwhile, up at the front, we've still got a close race here. Um, we've got DRS range for all of the top three, which is now Red Baron leading JDR, leading P2. Meanwhile, El Susio Dan has fought his way up to sixth place. Um, so he is definitely not out of it. But there's a slight gap that is formed between Ian Brax and Explanay. I might be uh, over Canadian pronouncing the, that. It might be Exponent, but I see ET at the end of the word, and I assume it's pronounced A. Rower has been trying to hunt down Prestige because he's having some difficulties with traction. Well, can you blame anyone for difficulties with traction right now? But right now, I think the story is we should be watching Rogaine. We want to see how he is he doing here. He's going to be chasing down Pat Lassard, shaping him up. His traction is very Ooh, good. And Red right Baron, okay. Red Baron and JD are into the pits. So is P2. Exponent so. follows. Ian follows as well. Also, Sudan in the pits, so everybody is pinning. Yep, and so Rogaine has Jeff made the call. It's Lassard time to uh, switch to intermediates. And let's see where Rogaine comes out. I think he's gonna come up P1, isn't he? He might have just made a fantastic 
move here. The only person who doesn't pit, I see a McLaren who's Balzac. still on the track. That's Balzac. Balzac, Balzac is wants to mess with this. Balzac so being see, bold so here. Actually, Rogan P5, so the, uh, he doesn't make that undercut. He actually loses, what, two spots? Or three, actually. He was P2, wasn't he? It's, it's pretty narrow. It seems like the moment to switch was probably this lap, but you like to see someone who's going for the gutsy strategy and, uh, well, gap flag. It turns out that in spite of his uh, really so unfortunate P2, lack of velocity, making there, an overtake on JD. And he makes it stick. Yeah, and, and okay, the block on the inside of JD. P2. That is pretty crazy. Yeah, P2 just blocked him crazy. so nicely. That was almost good teamwork there. Oh, but Drogon he was wide. A hard time to keep on the track. And Balls oh, like, no, Balls off oh. track, off track. Oh, these mediums. Oh, that's that. That's hard to say. Um, he's going to pit. He's going to drop all the way back to where Brith is, back around 14th place. He's going to be back with Pat Lassard, I think. Gap like gap flag. What happened? Ooh, I think we, he uh, lost it same place. and got safety oh, car a again. Safety car. That's that's unfortunate. So gap flag that's is out lucky another. for Balzac. Very, yeah. very lucky for Balzac, you're right. This is going to give him an opportunity to make up for the fact that I think he made a mistake in not coming in this last lap, but this is going to minimize his losses. So gap flag is out, there are 15 left. Giving a quick review, we have Red Baron still holding on to the lead after his uh, pole position. Uh, P2, oh wait, hang on, was that Red Baron who had pole? Or was he second? Regardless. Uh, Red Baron's got pole. P2, Rogaine in third, JDR up to fourth place, Balzac, the last person to not put on intermediates in fifth place, Exponé sixth, Brax, Ian seventh, Bricklot in eighth, Luke Brax in ninth, and El Susio Dan in tenth place, Brother Johnson eleventh, Prestige in twelfth, Mraro thirteenth, Krith fourteenth, and Pat Lassar still race in fifteenth position. Ooh. I think Balzac, Balzac just had yeah, the most damage to swing, didn't he? I think he's, no, it's good, it's good. Is it? We'll I've, see. Uh, I'm seeing they've there's gonna be a wing change. Yeah, they've got a wing lined up for him. Oh yeah. It doesn't really change much, does it? Because not a great still deal. Come He's out. Be, still come out right nice. by Chris. I just want to point out that Alsusia Dan. I, I'm pretty sure he got held in the pits. Yeah, he definitely did lose several positions there. He was P6, and uh, after the pit stop, he was P10. Yeah, that's going to be frustrating for him, uh, especially since uh, Luke Brax is, you know, that's a that's a solid racer. He's not going to just get an easy pass on him here. Oh, Chris picks up a penalty during the safety car. Unfortunate. So, how this looks for the championship? Um, JDR is looking in nice shape here. Uh, he's if uh, if things finish as they are right now, which they almost certainly will not. Uh, he's going to be in an excellent position to start expanding the gap to El Susio Dan, his main challenger. So Dan had uh, been undefeated in races he'd finished up until the Canadian Grand Prix, but he hasn't been able to beat JDR for the last two races. He's been second place to him in Austria and second place in Britain. Uh, I predict that he was going to be second place here again, but right now Dan's going to be really challenged to uh, make up these positions. Fortunately, the safety car has compressed things, so if he can make some aggressive moves early on, uh, he might be able to close up the gap. And we'll really get a chance to see if we can get some laps of clean racing, how these guys are going to handle this, because the wet conditions are always such an interesting test of your feel. Uh, it's a moment where, you know, technical knowledge of exactly where the braking points are falls a lot down to a good sense of exactly where the limits of your traction are during dynamic changing conditions. Yeah. Hey guys, I left the question network issue. Uh, I'll get you an invite. Safety guys giving us one more lap. So, Red Baron just managing. Um, and
and there's nothing else to do here. Everyone's all lined up. It's Red Baron, P2, Rogue Gang, JDR in 4th, Exponay in 5th, Ian Brax 6th, and Bricklock 7th. Luke Brax behind in 8th, and El Susio Dan now in ninth place somehow. How did he get up to 9th? He was in 10th a moment ago, was he not? Yeah, also because he joined Met Quali, he got the, uh, the Mercedes car instead of the Red Bull. Huh. Yeah. Prestige 11th, Raro 12th, Balzac in 13th, Griff 14th, and Pat Lassard in 15th position. I just realized, uh, this is the first race of the season that Lacka Jen hasn't been able to make it to. Yeah, he had some uh, stuff happen right before the race. Ah, uh, that's it. unfortunate. So, the people who've got full attendance, uh, Rogaine, Krith, Balzac, Rauro, Red Baron, and uh, Jay, you've got a full attendance still. Um, and who else? Pat Lassart and Nameless Nate. Uh, those are the people who are still in competition for the Perfect Attendance Award. There isn't an award, but uh, I will I will shut you out. And say thank you, because people who show up all the time, that's, that, what, that is what makes uh, leagues work. I mean, we almost had a full grid tonight. It was uh, which is, a pretty big crowd. Which is pretty crazy, actually. Yeah, I'm really proud of, uh, of all the work Because, uh, you know, we're uh, coming closer and closer to the release of the new game, and usually this is the period where people uh, take breaks from, from this game. So I'm surprised to see so many people tonight. Yeah, it's, uh, we're certainly very, very fortunate to have such a... Uh, involved and eager group of racers. So we've got safety car in this lap. Alright, you keep an eye on the front. I'll keep an eye on El Susio Dan and how this start goes for him. So Red Baron is, uh, again, the leader of the race, so he's gonna be the one to restart it. Last time he almost spun out on the exit of that chicane. Hopefully it doesn't happen this time. Alright, safety car pulls and safety into car the pit. is not yet into the pits. He has to cross the white line for the uh, race to resume. And Red Baron almost just spun and uh, P2 is... I think he's gonna take advantage of that, actually. He's gonna try to send it... Or actually, never mind. Ooh, but P2 gets hit from behind by Rogaine. And JD overtakes Rogaine here, and he might have a, have a go at P2, actually. Big moment, big moment. Dan just ran into the back of Luke Brax. I think he might have damage. JD is very close to P2. But he might have some endplay damage. Meanwhile, Rauer makes it through on Brother John, through uh, Camel Strait. So, JDR in hot pursuit of P2 for P2. Uh, that's just not going to get old for me. Oh, all's like in Krith having a fight here. Side by side through Brussels. But in the end, Krith emerges victorious in that little duel. Two guys who we usually see right near the front, they're stuck down in 13th here, but everything's equalized with the uh, safety car and everyone on the same strategy now, so they could definitely start pushing their way up past these uh, midfielders. Luke Brax takes position back on El Susio Dan. Dan made a lunge for it. We're gonna see if he can get past Luke Brax now as he comes out through Stavolo and down towards the long, it's not quite a straight, it's a big long curve with Blanchemont in the middle, going around the outside, side by side, and he is through. El Susio Dan takes 8th place from Luke Brax. Oh, and Prestige, Prestige is just is retired out. from the session. Alright, well there goes our second Ferrari. Is there going to be another safety car from this, or is he going to be cleared out of the way?
All the top three are still within a second of each other. Red Baron's got track position and the lead, yeah, and but oh, P2 is, uh, is right on his tail. Burning your ass here. And JDR playing the smart, slow game. I say slow, these guys are going very fast. Oh, uh, still in PA. He's made his way past Which Luke is... Braxton. Which is not ideal for him. Certainly not, especially as things are starting to spread out, but they're not too spread out yet. He's got Bricklot next on his uh, to-do list, but Brick is not going to want to give up this position, so we're going to see a little bit of a fight as they come into the downhill section. It's always a delight to see how people take this area. Brick doesn't quite take the Apex a little bit wide, but Dan isn't able to capitalize on it just now, but he is close. Coming through Lefine. So JD is really, really close on P2. Well, if there's going to be a chance to make a move, this is it. But keep in mind, of course, we do not have DRS. Um, so these are going to have to be uh, passes the old fashioned way. Here we go. Are we going to see a lunge or are we going to see some patience? JDR? JD still has like, what, 90% of ERS while uh, Yeah, he is, uh, he is waiting for a 75. mistake. Ian Brax is completely out of ERS. Oh wait, nope, never mind. He has... No, it's just a glitch on my end. LCC Dan threw a brick lot into the source. He has secured 7th position. Now he's looking at his teammate, Exponé. So Red Baron looking pretty good to finish, to maybe even win this race here. Absolutely, and this could be uh, the first time that two teammates uh, are winning in this uh, in this season. Since, uh, of course, Raro has a win in that ridiculous race that happened in China a couple Ooh, weeks ago. Oh, JD almost GD. lost it there. And now Rogaine, uh, who, in spite of his weird strategy, is... Uh, able to still find himself within spitting distance of the leader. We're getting some nice compression at the front here because Red Baron has the pace to manage this lead, but he doesn't have the pace to pull away from the guys behind him yet. No, this is gonna get pretty crazy towards the end. I agree, we're starting and, to see uh, the break It's up raining the more here. heavily, isn't, isn't it? It does look like the rain is picking up. So we've got a little battle of the top five, and then we've got a gap this far. Oh, JDR is through on P2 because P2 is wide and he falls to fourth, fifth place as he falls behind Ian Brax, but he is still in that same battling group here, but that has spread things out. Suddenly, they're outside of that one second window, which of course matters much less since, as I said before, DRS is disabled. Oh, there's a moment, P2 into the wall. And Rogan, oh no, Rogan has retired! Two moments here, what and suddenly happened? everything is being shaken up. They had a moment through Blanchemont into the wall. So we got another saved. And what's this? Everyone is pitting! Are they going for full wets? They're going for full wets. That, that's what it looks like. The rain is but so heavy. But not everyone is. Oh, and Red Baron and GD with Ian, they all missed the pit window. The safety car came out right after they passed the pit entry. Well, this is critical. And curiously, oh, that's the safety car. And the safety car catches Rauro. Uh, I assume he's going to get flagged by, though. There we go. Yeah, I'm pretty sure uh, the safety car has to let them through. Well, so, we're uh, on to safety car three. How many safety cars do you think we're going to get in this race? So what, this is the third one, right? This is safety car three. I'm gonna save one more safety car after this one, since these I'm conditions gonna... are rough. I'm gonna say this is the last one. Well, I certainly uh, hope you're right, since... So, uh... I was just here down in P12. So, uh, this race is not going his way at all. I'd like to point out that Chris in uh, P13 has stayed on the intermediate tires. Meanwhile, Exponé is the leader of the people who've pitted for wets. We've got an interesting group here. Ooh, and there's a bunch of penalties that just happened. 
I saw. Yes, I just saw brother Ball John. Ballsack or brother John? P2, yeah, brother yeah. John got us spinning under safety car. Do you think the top three runners are gonna come out in front of those guys? I don't. It's really hard to tell. I do not think that they are. All right, now the safety car is just perched, waiting for them, but everyone is having to travel at a very low pace. And right now, the gaps, well, let's look at what the gap is. The gap to the leader is, uh, there's 30, 30 seconds, roughly, uh, between the guys on the uh, wet, so 23 seconds back to Exponé. Uh, they just might narrowly get in in front of them. Well, that, oh no! Oh no! P2 what is happened? knocked in the back! by Brother John, and he gets a pen- oh, well, I, I, he's gonna protest that. He just got punted into a wall by Brother John, it looks like. Oh, that's disastrous. That's very unfortunate, because he was also one of the guys who had critically gone for those wet tires. Now they're going to have to pit so again. So Ian, Ian stays out on the intermediates. That's bold. That is bold. He's going, he's giving everything up for track position here. He's gambling that it's not going to just keep on raining harder and harder. Maybe he can do it. There's not going to be many laps left. Here we go, Red Baron so hitting up. Where, uh, Red Baron comes out. Red Baron's going to look. Oh, this is going to be close. This is really close. But he comes out in front of Exponent, so uh, it all works out perfectly. And JDR is just behind Exponent. And Ooh, so no. JD Red. actually got jumped. This is looking really promising for Red Baron to actually win this race. I mean, he's he's you know he's driving fantastically today. Yeah, he, he absolutely is. Like he has no not, mistakes whatsoever. Yeah. Not nothing beyond the tiniest little you know. If some people are hitting wide corners here, but I mean, who is not making the small mistakes that you honestly have to do if you're doing any sort of pushing in wet conditions? Meanwhile, El Susia Dan in 8th position. This race has been resetting so much. Luke Brax, oh, disconnects from the session. Yeah, probably an internet issue. Well, let's hope that he's able to get back before they restart. I think we're going to have one more lap under the safety car. Everyone's going to have so much saved, uh, saved fuel here. I think all of this will come down to just who's better in the rain, you know? Very much. I'd like to have a look at P2 here, because P2 got knocked off the track, but I don't think he actually took wing damage. So that's very fortunate. It would have been really disastrous if he'd gotten hit and had to pit there, so it turns out that, well, Brother John is the is the only victim of, uh, of that crash in terms of damage, at least. So now there's this weird situation here, because oh, Luke dear. Brax is ghosted. But I don't think the game is letting people through. No, and it sh it shouldn't be letting people through on him since uh, it's still it's still a ghosted car. They're gonna have to yeah, wait, of course, true. until the safety car restart, which is not happening this lap. They're still waiting for Griff and Brother John to rejoin the uh, train. And this is gonna be bad for El Dan because he really needs time to make up positions. He's been getting through on people, and then he just loses out. Oh, what's this? More, more confusion with Luke Brax here, uh, his ghost causing all sorts of consternation for P2, no doubt. Very, very slow coming into the final chicane. So Ian, the, I think he is the only one that's, that is still in the uh, you are correct. intermediates. I mean, pretty, pretty crazy, uh, pretty it's crazy daring. to stay out on, in this rain on the intermediates, but uh, I just want to see him try, you know? I, I respect the recognition that, hey, you know, this is my shot to take track position. And if there's another safety car, uh, no, if there's another safety car, he still has to pit under it. That's going to lose him a lot because everyone is so compressed. The track has not, the uh, pack, I should say, has not had the chance to spread out. Yeah, no kidding, Prestige. It is wet, and it has just gotten wetter. We're looking at a, at a classic spa... Well, you know, welcome to the bathtub, really. The spa treatment. So 
So, of those who are on the, uh, on the west, so, let's see, the people who pitted earlier, um, Exponé has been able to make his way up to third there, so he's holding a high position. JDR sitting in fourth, Bricklot and Luke Brax, whoa, that was a weird moment there. Uh, where they're fading through each other, oh, right, yes, of course, because Luke Brax is fading, fading in and fading out, and, uh, Brick is, uh, struggling to deal with that. <laughs> I don't blame him at all. That's a confusing situation to be in, and a very... I, I, it would be a right consternation for me if I was in that position. Oh my goodness, what do I do with this AI who's supposed to be driving slowly, but also you're not allowed to pass him. But also, he's a ghost. Oh dear! Oh no! P2 crashes into the back of Bricklot! Oh no! That's a disastrous situation. Luke Prax's ghost just causing so many issues here. So, did, wow. did Breck break his wing on that ghost? I don't know for certain. Um, I just saw a piece flying from his front wing, but and, I didn't see oh. where the contact was made. Oh man, this is going to throw these guys right to the back of the order. Yeah, and Ian, he's got to restart the race here. Plain and smart. Given a lot of space for you know for the uh, oh Ian went to AI going. for a moment. I saw Ian showing his AI for a split second there. I hope he's not also having issues, or else this is going to be a very hairy restart. My eyes he's are playing on it JDR. Smart. He's definitely playing it smart, giving himself a lot of of space for the restart. Oh dear, Chris, he's already going. He, I think he's already going, isn't he? Yeah, the safety car is in. They're, they're, they have to go. Yep. And here we He's go. He's gone. He's gone. Ooh, and Red Baron almost just ran into him. Oh my god. Avoided the and contact, but was... he's gonna lose position. Oh some no! Positions. He's pumped by Exponé! And now this might open up a window for JDR. Exponé, really? You know what? I, I'm really regretting my thought of not putting an explanation because I was like, I think this guy might have a really good race. Should I put him in? Nah, I'm gonna say balls. Oh no, and the red banner. Oh just goodness! Got, oh, what just happened? Huge crash there. Explanation is out. El Susudan up to fifth. That was explanation going into the wall there. Yeah, and side by side. Uh... Oh no! Bricklot into the wall. Debris ever a yellow flag in sector two. Goodness, it's so hard to see this what's happening right now. This restart was just so hectic. And Red Baron got a 3 second time penalty for track limits. And P2, broken wing. Oh, that's so unfortunate. Balzac, I was just saying, oh, my foolish prediction of Balzac podium. He's up to 7th place here. And JD Red Baron makes oh, a move JD. on Red Baron. And El Susu 10 is into 3rd place! Through all that chaos, but now El Susio Dan making a move. Oh, he's gonna go Red inside Baron. here. So brave of him. There he goes, Red Baron. And he's gonna make Very it. He's got a yellow flag sector too, but it's already cleared. I'm uh, gonna invite. To Luke. I want to point out that Luke Brax's ghost was running in P4. Yeah, I saw that. P2 at some point, through I think. Into fourth place. What a bizarre restart! And five yeah. laps to go! So JD P1 and also Shodan P2. Atlas Art and Bricklot side and by that, side. Yeah, I, I'm seeing that. That makes it stick. Balzac, though, drive through penalty on him. Goodness, there's some big piles of penalties on these guys here. We've got we've got five people with over ten seconds of penalties. Balzac serving his drive for now, that's gonna throw him right to the back. Unfortunate for him. So let's take a look at the penalties here. Yeah. There's a lot of them. There's a lot of penalties oh to sort through here. Oh my god. So Red Baron three seconds, Rara three seconds, P2, who is in P6 actually. 18 seconds. Pat, 20 seconds. Rick five seconds, Ranjon eleven. Curve 16, Balzac 10, Ian 3. So there's a lot of penalties today, a lot of, a lot of them. So if things stay clear here, we are now going to look at a straight up duel with El Susio Dan chasing down JDR. Dan has often shown himself to have some very good pace, but now 
we are going to see them dueling in full wet conditions to the end of this race. A little moment there for Dan. Red Baron starting to fall behind them. You can really see their pace here. They are pulling away from the rest of the pack, but Red Baron is looking in very good shape if he can hold on to this. And his teammate Rawr is also on for some fantastic points results. Luke Brax is still ghosted, and Pat Lassard, in spite of a very, very hectic race for him, is up to a fantastic sixth place. Yeah, uh, I'd like to notice that the rain is not as heavy anymore. But I'm pretty sure they're, they're all gonna finish on the wets. There's just no reason to switch off these wets. There's no gain in four laps. Luke Brax so is Pat goes overtaking past. the... Uh... Looks good. Pat Lassard into what would be uh, one of his best results of the season. Uh, he hasn't finished better than sixth yet in the opening race in Australia, and now he is looking on for a potential fifth place finish, although P2 is on a charge here. And speaking of on a charge, Exponé is going to be, he's, I'd be very steamed if I was in his circumstances, and he's, oh, Brother John goes wide in front of him. This is going to open up an opportunity for Exponé to get himself into the points. Ooh, oh, Brother John oh, oh. lost it there. Yeah. Well, after a while of uh, some rather wild moments, things are actually quieting down for the first time in this race. The big race right now is between Krith and Bricklot. Krith is charging for 7th place, Bricklot still holding onto it. It has been an upside down race today, Cub, but after everything starts to sort itself out, who do we see sailing off into the distance in the front? It's JDR pursued once again by El Susio Dan, up 6 and 14 positions respectively. Krith goes tight and takes the position away from Bricklot, but he goes a little bit wide. It looks like he's held onto it. Brick falls to 8th place. And uh, looks go still falling down the order. Yeah, hopefully he's able to reconnect, but that's just such a frustrating situation. He was running in such a high position here. Meanwhile, Rauro looks like he's starting to reel in Red Baron a little bit. Could we potentially see a Williams teammate battle for the podium later on? Or are they going to, perhaps wisely for the team, say, let's just finish this order and nicely done? JDR is pulling away. El Susio Dan does not have the pace to match him in these conditions. The gap has grown out to 4.2 seconds now. Oh, there's a yellow flag. Yeah, it looks McLaren's. like P2 goes wide. It was the balls like that uh, spun. Yes, that would have been the because uh, not what I had identified earlier. Although we've still got uh, Luke Rex bringing out a couple of uh, yellow flags just from being ghosted. So look at this, the front is really stretching out now. Oh, Balzac retirement! And Balzac retired. Oh, that's very unfortunate. There goes my podium prediction. <laughs> As if it wasn't already over. Well, it has been a very high attrition race today, Cub. We only have 12 left. If these guys can finish the race, then goodness, you know points are almost on offer for everyone who's making it to the end here. Although, I should knock on wood because that would require two more people to retire, and I don't want to see that happen. Dan has uh, fallen another second back. JDR just has so much pace right now. Oh, Dan, a moment! A big fishtail as he comes around into Liz Fanius, and he is still there. Red Baron, though, too far back to take advantage of it. But Raro is closing. Raro sees a podium here. He's definitely got the pace. He absolutely does. Red Baron is certainly struggling two laps now. Left. Ooh, that burn! Did you see that? I was Big looking moment. at Martha John at the moment. Big and Rara is gonna make an overtake on him. Actually, there we yeah. go. He takes Easy it through. Overtake. Oh, that's 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 hard to take. But Red Baron just needs to hold on here. 
at this point, it's okay. That that slipped away. He's been leading so much of this race. He was managing it so very well that now he just needs to coax it to the end. He has two laps to go. JDR charging off into the distance here. He is now almost eight seconds ahead. P2 possibly going to make a move on Brother John here for ninth place. And what's this? Krith is going into the pits. I think he must have some damage. Most likely or maybe fastest too. lap. Fastest lap, perhaps. Yeah, and he's serving that 5 second penalty. Well, this might... Well, this will, in fact, definitely promote Ian Brax up to 12th place. Yeah, Krith, Krith going for fastest lap certainly wouldn't, uh, wouldn't work since uh, he's not going to be in the top 10 at this rate. Oh, P2 catches a uh, three-second time penalty coming out of radio. But let's have a look at the penalties around. Oh, goodness, P2 is just loaded up to the gills with penalties. He's going to get demoted down out of the points here. Although, I think a few of those penalties were not deserved. He got struck several times under the safety car, if I'm not mistaken, so he might be able to protest a few of those away. And Brother John has 11 seconds of penalty, so if two of those safety car collisions were not his fault, then he could still conceivably be uh, fighting Brother John for a position on track here. No, look, Brax. His ghost is in the points at the moment. He's P10. But his brother is coming up behind him fast, and I think he's got the time. I think Ian Brax can manage to salvage this, but oof. That's uh, that's riding these intermediates. It's, uh, it's a rough situation. You can see how much time he has lost. This is really a, a pretty good illustration of how harsh those intermediates can be uh, under these extremely wet conditions. But I have to say, he seems to be managing it quite admirably as he uh, comes up behind his teammate here, oh, sorry, his brother, not teammate. I think he's going to be moving into the points as he comes into the chicane. So after an absolutely off-the-wall race, we are finally seeing things, I dare I say, calming down. Um, towards the funnel, as everything spreads out, no one is close enough to run into each other anymore. <laughs> that is a pretty crazy race. Sure. Absolutely, this is one that will bear watching again, since I, I would love to see more angles on that final safety car restart where everything fell apart for so many people. There are so many racers, uh, P2, Exponé, who were up there competing for the win, and it just fell out of their hands with that very wild start behind the intermediate tired Luke Brax. So here we go, on board with JDR as he is riding and he just has to manage. He is 11 seconds out of the lead. He can coast to a finish here. In second place, we've got El Susio Dan, five and a half seconds clear of Raro, who just has some very, very good pace here. This is going to be his second podium of the season if he can just keep on the track for one third of a lap. Red Baron, after leading so much of this race, is going to be looking to finish in fourth place. And Pat Lassard, after so much disaster, after striking, I believe, striking balls, multiple pit stops. Let's count the pit stops here. Pat, oh, it's only two stops. It's only two stops, so forgive me. I, I imagined that there had been more than what had happened, but he had a challenging race and is rewarded handsomely with five fifth position, and all the points that come along with. Well done to Pat Lassard. So, JDR, El Susio Dan, and Raro. Come, was it you who predicted Raro? Um, I am pretty sure I did say Raro. I think you did. Uh, although I don't think you predicted JDR and El Susio Dan as the other uh, two. Yeah. Oh, I said well Nameless done. Nate, I said Nameless Nate, Prestige, and Raro. All right. Uh, Bricklot is promoted. Oh, right, because Pat Lassard has those penalties. He's going to fall to 7th yeah. off of that next one, eh? But I imagine that there's going to be a bit of busy stewarding this coming week as we sort through all of the penalties that happened here. Yeah, this is, uh, this is a pretty chaotic race, I must say. 
It was My a fun one chaos, to watch for sure. I think that that is absolutely true. Hey there, Dan. So, is here, Dan. I think he made up like 16 possessions. Yes, Dan nine. made up. He, he came from so far back and he'd been right in the middle of the pack for so much of that race. But in the end, uh, when he came out behind um, in second place, uh, he simply didn't have the pace to catch up. The JDR was wildly fast once he got himself into the lead. Um, Red Baron was able to manage the lead for so long. But once released, there was no stopping him. Well raced, everyone. I can only imagine how challenging those conditions were. Fastest lap does go to Red Baron with a 146.8, so that's going to be uh, a nice little uh, consolation for, uh, for you know, leading so much and then ending up fourth. But I think, you know, you have to be happy with P3 and P4 for your team. That's a very fine I result. Mean, you know, up, up until like the third restart, it was looking like he's gonna win the race. So I'm Absolutely. pretty sure he is really disappointed in, uh, in that result. Yeah, well, you know, uh, I, I would tell, and, and will tell him, like, that was an expertly managed race. You did well. Uh, when things started falling back at the very end, you did well in order to hold on to what positions you did still have. He didn't lose his head about anything. He held on, and P4 is still a very fine result. That's 12 points. Half of a win, uh, half of a win still. So JD taking the win. Oh, this is gonna P2. You know, I was kind of hoping that it, it, it wouldn't happen again, but it did. But you know, those guys, they, they just have the pace, you know. They're the I best mean, it's sort of like division. people people predicting a certain two people as P1 and P2 last season, Cub. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a you know, bit of an easy path. Start of the season, where well, you had Plasma, you had Distortion, there's you know, a few people that were uh, fighting for that win. Very true, yes. But as this, you know, season went on, people dropped, stuff happened. Well, uh, it has been an eventful and wild race here in Spa Francorchamps in Belgium. Uh, I'd like to say thank you very much, Cub, uh, my, uh, my fellow caster, and to Jay, who was able to cast for a little bit in the middle of this race. Sorry that you uh, retired early on, but. Uh, how would you wrap this one up, Cub? You know, uh, I kind of knew that when Balzik said uh, there's going to be ra rain in 20 minutes, I knew this is going to be a crazy race, because, you know, every time there is rain in Div 2, it, it, it's just really crazy. I well, personally loved this race. It was, it was really fun to else. watch, really fun to cast with you, though. Absolutely, and it's always very fun to cast with you as well, Cub. Um, to everyone who is tuning in on the stream, thank you very much for tuning in. For everyone who showed up for the race, thank you very much. You guys are what make this league what it is. So, a big hand to all of you. And hey, let's see if we can set the next race with 20 people. I mean, you know, that's always the goal. Everyone, thank you for, uh, for watching. We'll see you uh, Wednesday, 8.30 Eastern, 7.30 Central. For Div 1, exactly same track. Hopefully not the same conditions, though. But and, uh, casters for that race is going to be Raro and uh, Red Baron. Our third and fourth place drivers for today. Yeah, really good result for both of them. Anyway, let's wrap this up. Thank you guys All for right. watching. We really do appreciate it. Because uh, if people were not watching it, I wouldn't be doing this. So uh, I'll see you once again, guys. See ya. See you, everyone. <sighs>